You've probably heard of methane. It's that smelly gas given off by farm animals, among other things. But there is more to methane than meets the... nose. One carbon atom, four hydrogen atoms. Methane forms the bulk of the molecular mix that is natural gas. It is highly flammable. When methane burns, it produces carbon dioxide, water vapour and a whole lot of energy. What makes natural gas a fossil fuel is that it is formed from the remains of plants and animals that lived millions of years ago. These remains have been submerged and compressed over the millennia, being laid deeper and deeper under the Earth's surface. Century upon century, each layer added a little more weight, compressing what lay below. And because all the layers were made up of different substances, this pressure caused chemical interactions to occur, such as a vein of coal, which is a fossilised, decomposed forest, being heated up by layers of salty sandstone, which is the fossilised remains of a dried up ocean. Over time, as the earth has moved, cracks and fissures have formed, making room for the gas created by this underground combustion to collect into a gas reserve. There are no indications above ground that natural gas reserves exist below. A reserve is located using seismic equipment and could as easily be deep below the ocean as underneath the land on which we walk. New Zealand is rich in prospectivity. Reserves exist in the South Island but await further exploration and development. Currently the main source of natural gas is from the North Island and its adjacent seas. The Maui offshore gas field and the onshore Kapuni gas field at the base of Mount Taranaki are New Zealand's two main producing fields, with other fields such as Puhukura and Kupe coming on stream. Gas from these fields is piped as far north as Whangarei, east as far as Gisborne, south through to Wellington and up the east coast to Hastings. There are several South Island centres which benefit from pipe supply of liquefied petroleum gas. A well is basically a pipe through which the gas is brought to the surface. Because natural gas is trapped under huge pressure, it usually rises through the well shaft without any pump or lifting equipment. The gas that forms underground contains oil, water and other gases and compounds, but it is the methane, propane and butane content that powers gas plants and appliances. All other content is removed, in line with New Zealand standards for gas, during the splitting phase of processing. Scrubbers remove sand or rock <coughs> particles that have come up with the gas. Various temperature and chemical based processes, which often exploit the differing boiling points of the various hydrocarbons, are employed to ensure that any other impurities are extracted. Liquefied petroleum gas or LPG is a product of the natural gas purification process. It consists of the hydrocarbons propane and butane and meets the New Zealand standard for LPG. Natural gas meets the New Zealand standards for gas when these and other impurities have been removed. It wells with a high CO2 content such as Kapuni which yields a gas that is almost half carbon dioxide by volume. More complex treatment is required to purify the gas. Once the gas is out of the ground, it is still quite a journey to its final destination. Because natural gas and LPG are flammable, but odourless and basically invisible, it is necessary to odorise them for ease of detection. The odorisation process adds a substance called mercaptan to give the gas a rotten egg smell that lets us know when gas is present or leaking. The CV, which is the energy content of the gas, is measured at this point. It must fall within a specific range to be suitable for use in gas appliances. Commercially, gas is sold via a wholesale and retail market. 
Natural gas is transported to consumers via a high pressure transmission pipeline system and through regional distribution systems and networks to supply homes, offices, shops and factories. LPG is a fuel that is easily transported by land, sea and rail to meet fueling needs that cannot best be serviced by the current natural gas network. Once the gas is processed to specification and odorised, it passes into the transmission system. This is a network of high pressure pipes running from the processing plant to the gate stations, from where it enters the distribution system. <coughs> from the processing plant to the gate station, the gas is still at maximum pressure, around 8,600 kPa, and travels through steel pipes. <coughs> These pipes have a yellow anti-corrosive coating. Compressor stations at strategic locations along the pipeline boost the gas pressure to maintain maximum flow. Mainline valve stations are situated along the transmission pipeline at intervals of 30 km in rural areas and as little as 5 km in urban areas. These mainline valves can be closed to sectionalise a pipeline in an emergency. Most of the transmission system is remotely monitored 24 hours per day. Data is acquired from one of the 250 control stations where sophisticated real-time control systems allow immediate response to any pipeline malfunction. At the gate station, where the gas is transferred from the transmission system to the distribution system networks, pressure is reduced to less than 2,000 kPa. Because lower pressure results in a cooling of the gas, it needs to be heated at this point to prevent the pipes freezing. At the same time, the gas is filtered to remove any dust or debris, and its volume is metered. The next stage in the journey is through the gas distribution network to the consumer's point of supply. Along the way, the gas passes through the district regulator station, where the pressure is reduced further to between 400 and 700 kPa. The piping used in the distribution system is steel for pressures above 700 kPa, and polyethylene, or PE piping for pressures below 700 kPa. This PE piping, coloured yellow, or black with a yellow stripe, is the most commonly used piping in the distribution network. Some pipes in older network areas are still made of cast iron. These lower pressure networks are the principal means of supply to the domestic, commercial and light industrial users. They run under roads and streets to the individual consumer's gas measurement system, commonly known as the gas meter. For smaller commercial or domestic users, the GMS on their property reduces pressure to around 3 kPa and measures the amount of gas the consumer is using. The consumer installation consists of appliances, pipework and flues. A metering station, as found in some large commercial operations, is essentially just a larger version of the suburban household meter regulating and monitoring the gas that passes from the network to the consumer. Anyone working in or around the distribution and GMS sectors must be competent to minimum certificate of competency requirements. The largest use of natural gas in New Zealand is for the generation of electricity, either directly or through cogeneration. Almost half of all processed natural gas is used in this way. Another major use is as feedstock by the petrochemical industry in methanol and ammonia urea plants. The remainder of New Zealand's gas supply services the industrial, commercial and residential sectors. Of those industrial commercial users, the three largest groups are the steel, forestry and dairy sectors. Gas utilities in their turn distribute around 4% of the national total supply to 250,000 domestic users. All gas homes are a current trend in new subdivisions. As existing supply options change, the electricity generating, petrochemical, dairy, forestry and meat industries are having to consider alternative fueling options in the future, such as the importation of liquefied or compressed natural gas or LPG. But the natural gas and LPG networks, which supply homes, institutions and some light industry, 
can expect a continued supply well into the future, both from existing reserves and new fields coming online. Gas is generally purchased from an energy retailer. The retail market supplies industrial, commercial and residential consumers who are billed by the energy retailer at regular intervals. The energy retailers work together with appliance retailers and network companies to arrange the consumer's connection to the natural gas or LPG network. Alternatively, LPG cylinders can be supplied. A Craftsman gas fitter will complete the installation, which includes piping out the house, installing the appliances and providing a gas fitting certification certificate. The consumer should retain their copy of this certificate as assurance that the installation and the appliances that have been installed are in compliance with the current legislative requirements. When the installation is ready for use, the retailer will arrange the final connection to the GMS and commence supply and billing. All gas appliance manufacturers and retailers are obliged to comply with current legislation governing the provision of safe appliances for the New Zealand market. The consumer is legally obliged to maintain their installation, which consists of appliances, associated pipework and flues, to ensure it does not create a hazard. Ideally, consumers should have their appliances checked by a gas fitter regularly. Some appliances, by their design, may need more regular servicing. Due to the existence of a flame in gas appliances, consumers need to ensure that the necessary clearances from combustible materials are maintained at all times. If they are in any doubt, they should approach either their gas fitter or the appliance retailer for more information. It is important that all consumers know how to shut off their gas supply in case of an emergency. Natural gas and LPG are non-toxic and efficient fuels, particularly for direct use, as in the domestic market. They produce 25% less carbon dioxide than other fossil fuels and no ash or smoke. The gas wells and most of the pipeline infrastructure are out of sight and underground. There are risks, of course, as when dealing with any flammable substance. Responsibility for safe handling of gas itself, the distribution network and end-use appliances lies with all respective parties from wellhead to burner tip. Natural gas in its raw state is odourless and colourless and being lighter than air will tend to rise, accumulating at the top of any enclosed environment. Because of this, as a safety requirement, the gas is odourised for easy detection. LPG is also odourised, but by comparison is heavier than air and will accumulate in low places. <gasps> Neither gas is poisonous, but in sufficient quantity either can cause asphyxiation due to lack of oxygen. It is also possible for any appliance that is improperly maintained or ventilated to produce the toxic gas, carbon monoxide. Advise consumers that they must always use their appliance in a well-ventilated area or in accordance with manufacturer's instructions and must take any gassy smells or symptoms of unwellness seriously. Where people intend to dig in an area that may contain gas pipelines, whether on public, private, rural or urban property, they must first confirm the location of the pipelines. The transmission system displays yellow and black notices on white posts along its length above ground. Pipeline location information for the distribution network can be gained from the network owners. Note that in some cases there is more than one network owner in an area. The free phone numbers in the front of the phone book provide contact details for distribution network owners. And on residential properties, pipes are located by careful hand digging. Further information can be found at the Department of Labour's website under Guide to Safety with Underground Services. Anyone who is building, fencing, planting, blasting, working with drains or moving earth in the vicinity of the transmission pipeline will legally require a work permit from the pipeline operator. Because gas pipework is underground, it is vital to check before digging. The leading cause of pipeline damage comes from excavation and thrust boring equipment. Anyone who damages a pipeline through unsafe practice may be liable to prosecution by the Department of Labour. 
Excavators must always check plans, look for warning signs, use a pipe locator where possible and locate all services by hand digging. This means using hand tools rather than power tools. If a gas leak is suspected during excavation or in a public place, the area must be evacuated and all sources of ignition removed. The fire service or gas emergency number in the front of the phone book must be called as soon as possible and everyone must stay upwind of the leak. If a consumer finds a gas leak is coming from their appliance, advise them they must turn the appliance off. Open the doors and windows to ventilate the area. Make sure there are no flames nearby and operate no electrical switches. They must turn off their gas meter or LPG supply cylinder. Then call their retailer or a registered gas fitter from a telephone away from the gas leak. The phone could provide a source of ignition for the gas. A major potential issue is gas outage due to natural disaster. All industry participants have prepared contingency and emergency management response plans covered by the National Gas Outage Contingency Plan in accordance with civil defence legislation. See the GANS website for more details. Gas is all around us. It is forming and being extracted from the earth. It is travelling underneath some of the same roads as we drive on and it is working to generate electricity, fuel industry, maintain our communities, warm our homes and cook our food. It is a vital commodity utilising a major energy infrastructure. Natural gas and LPG are clean, efficient and safe energy sources when used correctly. It is the responsibility of all parties in the supply chain to understand their obligations, to maintain their portion of the infrastructure and to observe safe practice at all times. The consumer, whether industrial, commercial or domestic, is obliged to maintain their installations in accordance with legislative requirements. They must know how to respond in an emergency. A number of nations are switching to natural gas and modern exploration methods have led to greater supplies than ever before. With increasing consumer awareness of global issues such as energy sustainability and the importance of greenhouse gas reduction, natural gas and LPG are fuels of choice for the future. <laughs>